There is nothing worse than untapped potential. If you know that you're made for more, this is the place. I know that every successful person I've ever met has one thing in common. They do not let themselves fall victim to their circumstances. They figure out a way to rise above it. So join me on this journey where I help you to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. If you're feeling stuck and you're needing some practical tools, some hope to get you to that better life, this is definitely the place for you. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Lachelle Weemey, and today we get a chance to talk to mindset consultant, Alyssa Trask. You guys, she is going to blow your socks off with all of the beautiful wisdom that she has from her own experience and the ways that she helps other people. Alyssa, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm so excited to chat with you. I'm really excited too, and thank you so much for holding this space to collaborate and really dive into why I'm here and how we connected. So thank you so much. Yeah, I love that. And I feel like you literally people are going to be blessed by this conversation today. So I am so excited to just get a chance to dive into what exactly is a mindset consultant? What is it that you do and how do you help people today? I was just thinking about this this morning. So anytime I say mindset, a lot of people just assume that it's affirmations and always being positive and all the things, but mindset is really being accepting of where you are right this moment, realizing that you have a greater goal or achievement and taking that step by step rather than getting overwhelmed by everything. And through that process, building confidence, resilience, momentum in order to achieve whatever goal possible. And speaking off my own experience, having support and having someone that's gone through it as well really allows you to explore more about yourself in a deeper, meaningful, and enlightening way. Yes. And it's like almost like we discover who we are along that path of figuring out what is holding us back and where we're getting hung up and, and literally learning about our minds in order to accomplish what it is that we want to. It's really in the micro habits that we do every single day that make us who we are, make us the resilient person that we are and allow us to achieve what it is that we want to achieve. That's kind of what I'm hearing you say. And I believe it wholeheartedly. Does that sound pretty accurate? Absolutely. It's those little habits that create that momentum, that energy, that focus, yes. and it allows you to keep building upon it because we should enjoy the journey through it, not just expect it all just to happen and just be done. Like you get to live through the emotions. You get to live through how your brain is reshaping and how differently you approach the world. It's such a beautiful thing. So much so. And it's so funny, you guys. So I just feel like every conversation that I'm having on this show lately is a divine orchestration of exactly what it is that you guys are supposed to hear. And it's so cool because at the day that we're taping this, um, or recording, I'm so like, that's how old I am. You guys, <laughs> Lord, there hasn't been a cassette tape in my house for 25 years. <laughs> but anyway, by the time I recorded this, you know, I literally posted something today that said, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to pull it up because it's so cool how all this stuff is working together. So it said, do what you can with what you have from where you are. And yes. it's just honoring that. Do what you can what you have from where you are. And every single day we get a chance to build upon that before you know it, you're going to be exactly where you want to be. And so I would love for you to tell us, Alyssa, a little bit about your journey. Why is it, or how is it that you became so passionate about helping people with this? Uh, I believe because I firsthand experienced a lot of setbacks in my own journey, um, a story or chapter of my life was in my mid to late 20s. I remember waking up being totally upset that I had to do X, Y, and Z for the day, already hating life, hating what I was doing. I was drinking a lot. I was numbing out the pain or the emotions that I just didn't know how to process because growing up, no one was telling me, feel your emotions, you know, work through them. It was shut up, get it done and just be over it. It wasn't really that space to evolve. 
And I remember specifically the day after Christmas, it was in what, 2019, I hit the lowest point that I've ever hit. And I remember thinking like, I have two crossroads at, at this time. It's either keep going and figure it out or I'm done. And I think that was like the wake up call for me, feeling that deep depression and realizing that I have the choice to get out of it or I have the choice to keep diving deeper in it. So at that time, I, I, I honestly got down and talked to the universe and I was like, I need some guidance. I don't know what, but I need something. And through that question, everything just started evolving and like coming to fruition. I started getting spiritual again. At that time, I was atheist. I didn't believe in anything. And it was wild asking for help. It was the first time I honestly asked for help in a very long time. And through that, I just started wanting to learn about myself, learning about why I'm feeling these emotions, learning about what thoughts come up and why I'm thinking them, learning about trauma, learning about just anything to do with the mind and about our bodies and how we're in control of a lot of these things but we're never taught. We're never really exposed to it. So during that time, I was now getting so curious and more lighthearted about my journey rather than I'm not where I want to be and I give up because that's what I did for so long. But I always just kept giving up on myself. But once I realized it's a mindset, it's those little habits, it's how you're showing up day to day, not about the bigger picture, but just moment by moment and being centered really gave me the energy and really allowed me to hone in. This is why I'm here on this earth, to be of service to others going through that because my why is so you don't have to get to that point that I did. That's what's getting me to really show up every single day and to spread the message because I've been there. And if maybe I heard something earlier or was exposed to it, maybe it wouldn't have gotten to that point. And I, I'm not just going to paint a picture for people. I know that you've said kind of where you were, you know, emotionally and how lost you felt, but tell me about your day to day back when, you know, you were still struggling. Like, tell me about your day to day. And then I would love to contrast your day to day now. Oh, absolutely. So at that time I was serving tables and I was working 40 hours a week, which is a lot being around the general public. So my energy was already drained as it was. Every day I was drinking, I would say very heavily. I uh, didn't know there was a contrast between having a drink and blacking out. I thought drinking was just blacking out. So that was, that was a, an issue for a bit. Um, I also was arguing a lot with everyone around me, my husband, with, which was my boyfriend at the time, bless his heart, and then my family and just I really loved drama. So I created a lot of that too. Um, at that time, I was watching a lot of the Real Housewives, which I still secretly love, but not to the extent that I was watching. It was like five to six hours a day. I'm not even kidding you. And then I was also smoking. So I was smoking an e-cig for the, like five years. What was the attraction? I'm just curious because I really want to tap into this. Like what was the attraction with Real Housewives in the sense that you wanted to just dive into that life? Um, watching their lives for that amount of time? Like, what was it that you were getting from that? I think it was two things. It was the drama aspect because I believe I was getting a dopamine release from seeing people argued. I don't know. That's all, I, that's all that comes to mind. But then also seeing that these people had a life that I, I think deep within me that I wanted. I wanted more extravagant things and I wanted just to like not work as much and just, I think it was really living my fantasy within me, but at that time I had no realization. Yeah, and I, and I ask that because I think it's a really interesting thing that many of us do that, where we will tune into the reality TVs and try to live through their experiences where really what God is calling us to do is to step into that life for ourselves. And so we spend days 
watching other people live the life that we want, right? And how amazing would it be to start living <laughs> the life that we want, right? So, so tell us a little bit about what your life is like today. Okay, so my life today is very creative. Um, I start my day with my little habits. So I go on a walk for 30 minutes. I do my little exercise. And I love to do this thing where I just write for 15, 20 minutes every day. Um, I'm also creating a lot. So I'm building a course right now for mindsets. I'm also, you know, collaborating. I'm going out and talking, meeting new people, networking. I'm also just finding different ways to market. But the biggest contrast that I would say between then and now is my ability to talk to people. Because for so long, I was stuck in my bubble of, I don't like anyone, this is it, that I never exposed myself to different possibilities. I can completely relate to the sense of, you know, when you're in service and it can be completely draining. I mean, years of working in the hospital, you pour out yourself to other people. But now that I'm, that I'm home and, and working on my own business, like I get a chance to use people and networking as fuel. It's so weird. It's almost like I feel more energized when I meet these people because I'm connecting on a totally different way. I'm not pouring myself out, but I'm allowing this exchange of beautiful energy when I'm surrounding myself with people who are vibrating at the same level that I am. Right. And it's almost like this totally different way that I experience people. Are you finding that too? Yeah, because you, your vibration is what you're attracting. I believe for so long in my twenties, my vibrations at a lower frequency. So that's what I was getting. It was a lot of, you know, this is my life. There's nothing I can do about it. Very fixed mindset orientated, but the more that I've been just working on myself and wanting to expand and again, with service and exploring, I'm finding people that are doing the same. Yes. And it's so much fun. And tell us a little bit more about your, your writing, because I find that that is something that a lot of people really struggle with. Like, I don't know what to write and it's really hard for me to write. So tell us a little bit about that practice. Okay. So this is a great book to start the artist's way by uh, Julia Cameron. This is a game changer. Um, it's what started my journey with really getting into creative writing. What I do is I just hold that space for myself to, you know, 10, 15 minutes doesn't have to be serious. And I, I start my day off that way, right? But what I'm learning is the more that I do so, I'm getting these glimpses of inspirations or these feelings of inspirations. And I'm just writing and it just feels fluid. Like I just feel something externally coming in and just taking the, the pen and writing now. But when I first started, I did not have any of that. It was, okay, you have to get past that barrier of performing the task and then consistency. So those two, and then all of a sudden after a while, it just becomes creative and fluid. And did you find that you started with some prompts, like some questions that you asked yourself, or was this book kind of the launching pad for the way that you do things? That was definitely the launch you had because I knew within me, I've always wanted to write, but I always had these like blocks that, oh, I just don't know what to write or how do I start? And that really was the pillar for me to really begin it. I love that. Well, you guys, we're going to make sure that we get the link to that book in the show notes just so that you can check it out if this is something that you're feeling inspired to do follow up on. All right, sis, what I would love to do next is just really talk about some of the things that you did to get yourself from that space of, you know, where you described yourself as working 40 hours a week and being exhausted and drinking and, and doing all the things that were self-destructive and to literally take us down that journey of how the heck you got to this beautiful space that you are now, what things would you tell us to inspire us? To, to always be just accepting where you are and to have compassion for yourself. I always remind myself that at whatever time of my, whatever place of my journey, I was just doing the best that I could. I was surviving. So understand and have that grace, but to approach everything one step at a time was the best advice that I gave myself because for so long, I had the all or nothing mindset of 
everything has to change within an instant. And then when it doesn't stick, there's something wrong with me. Right. But what I learned what is it's all within your brain. Like you can restructure or rewire it. And that's all that you really need and to have that one day at a time approach. But like for drinking, for example, how I stopped was I stopped going to bars. <laughs> I stopped hanging out with people that that's all that we did. And at first it was a shock because I essentially was changing my identity. I was changing my self image of myself and that comes with some grief. So I want to advise anyone that anytime you change a part of your life, you're shedding a layer of you too. And that comes with a lot of different emotions as well. So through that process, you know, giving up on drinking and then just starting to hold that space where, what do I want to do with my life? What's helping me? And it kept coming back to mindset because I've been certified in nutrition and personal training. And I'm like, something is a pattern right now. What's that pattern that's holding everything together? And I realized it's all about the mindset. It's how we're approaching it. So that really helped me shape myself from back then to who I am now and who I'm becoming. And I think that there's two things that really stand out to me is number one, you had to change your environment that you were around. And I think that sometimes when we think about habits or thinking about looking at life differently and, and showing up in life differently, something as simple as changing the environment that we're around, meaning where we're spending our time, what we're exposing ourselves to and who we're exposing ourselves to can be a huge step in just giving ourselves this total new energy around us and this total new way of living. And it's something as small as the environment. The other thing that I thought was so fascinating that you said, because I believe it wholeheartedly, is that our identity of who we think we are is probably one of the most important things that dictate what we do and how we show up. So if I think that I am always, I'm a late person and identify myself as a late person, I'm going to make decisions that are going to keep allowing me to show up late, right? Because that's the identity that I've taken for myself. And so we oftentimes fail to acknowledge the fact that how important it is that we look ourselves, look at ourselves in a way that is consistent with the person that we want to be as well, right? Absolutely. And so, so what are some of the other habits and patterns? Like kind of give us an idea. I just love to learn from people. Like what's the, you mentioned how you start your day, but kind of give us an idea of some of these amazing habits, these small changes that you've made in yourself that have gotten you to where you want to go, or even just sharing with us some of the things that you have your clients do that help them. Right. So with habits, I find that the, the more clear and defined you are for the results, the more focused your brain can be. So with my clients and myself, we're all guilty of doing this. We tend to put everything in the same bowl or bucket and expect everything to happen. So what we really need to do is focus on that one specific habit at a time. So when I say I start my day with a walk and then after my walk, I do my, my exercise. And then after my exercise, I journal. It didn't start all like that. First, I started walking for two to three months beforehand. I really focused on that 30 minutes for myself and didn't really think of, of, of anything else to do with that other than walking, being in nature and giving that time back to me. And from that, I was thinking, oh, I, I wanna incorporate some exercise. Again, I'm, I didn't go, I need 30, 40 an hour. I was more so, I wanna become this like a habit. So I'm gonna do 10, 15 minutes. And what I've learned through these short spans of habits that you do on a daily basis, your, your, your ability to do them frequently is going to increase the level of responsibility or stress, which I don't believe I want with a habit. Habits for me are something that fills me up and allows me to get ready for a task at hand. And it's also something for me that I build upon. So with the journaling, that's now helping me create my course. It's allowing me to make all my marketing, it's allowing me to write emails and 
really honing in on my messaging. It's just giving me that space to process my thoughts. And then how we were talking about with that habit, now that fluidity. So with that fluidity, it's now creating more more thoughts that align with my bigger goal. And right now I'm building where my business will be in three to five years, but realizing that these habits that I'm conducting daily is going to keep me on track. And also with my goals, I'm going to evolve with it. So these habits are cut in stone. This is it. No, like I evolve with them and I give myself the grace of you know, I'll try new things and they just don't align with the bigger picture or they just don't align with where I'm going because we as humans are constantly changing and that's okay too. So how do you know when something is out of alignment? Like, is it something where you try it for a little bit and you're like, yeah, this doesn't feel good or do you typically feel it right away? So I'll try I'll try my new habits for a few weeks. And if it's draining me to the point where I'm not, it's not really making me more creative or giving me a result, I'll I'll change it up and I'll just kind of play around and maybe change the time or I'll change where I'm conducting it at or I'll change just these little things. And sometimes that will fix it right away. I mean, there's habits that we have that, yeah, it requires energy. And at first it's going to be a little bit of an energy drain, but also if you do certain habits for an extended period of time, sometimes you just need to spice it up. So like I'll go to Starbucks some days just to change my environment when it comes to writing. If I'm not feeling creative in that time at home, or let's say I'm filming for my marketing and it's not fun at my home, I'll go somewhere else and still keep that time and that, and that um, container for myself, but just to give it some spice, I guess. Love that. And I'm curious, have you found that there might be a habit that you're trying to introduce into your life that doesn't fit at the time, but it's something that you look back and you're like, oh, it just wasn't the right time. Like, and you introduce it into your life maybe a year later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I find that I get overzealous sometimes with the habits I want to form and I want to do all the things. And I've realized, yeah, I'm currently now places where I thought six months ago that would have taken so much longer, but because of those smaller habits, it's really allowing that momentum to continue to push and pull me into that right direction on things. And I love that because I can be in a very much of an all or nothing thinker also. And that can sabotage us because we sound, it sounds so great. Right. And then we think, okay, I want to do all of that. And then we take on way too much. And then we think, oh my gosh, this isn't working. Or we start to believe the identity again, that we aren't capable of something like that. And so then we shame ourselves and it goes down to this cycle of, I'm not capable of doing that stuff. And therefore we don't show up the way we want to. Right. And Absolutely. So- tiny little pieces that you can build upon that can, can literally be a game changer. And so I'm curious, well, you said a couple weeks and I've heard different things about formation of habits. So what is your experience with the length of time that it's really taken yourself or other people that you've worked with to really start to solidify habit? Like what are some realistic expectations that we can have around ourselves? Okay. So habits are formed anywhere from 20 something days to 300 days. There is no specific number. It's all about how you create that habit into your day-to-day life. And after realizing that, I, I really came to understand that I'm special and the way that habits work for me are going to be my special way. And with my clients, I would at least say from experience to keep something really jam-packed it's about three months that's so great. that's where I find it I love that so three weeks three months or 300 days like I love the threes that we can think about <laughs> ourselves a little bit of grace that if it's not catching on one thing that I found with myself I have a very solid morning routine and I've had it for years I love it and it literally sets me up for for the day ahead but what I also find is that sometimes I can be 
really rigid, I guess, in my routine. So if my, I get up earlier before my family on purpose so that I can have this time, but sometimes life happens, right? And I needed a little bit more sleep or maybe they got up earlier and I can get thrown off. So what do you find has been helpful for you or your clients around those things where life just kind of gets in the way of our habits? Uh, for me, I believe rest is a big component. We're not designed to do something every single day. And on the weekends, I give myself grace and I allow myself to sleep in. I allow myself to deep plug off of social media and I allow myself just to enjoy life however it comes. So Saturday and Sunday are my living days. This is just me as my authentic self and just what's happening is going to happen because I was realizing I was very strict with, I'm, I am strict with my habits. I don't want to downplay that. But it was to a point where something came up or shifted the trajectory of my schedule, I would have a little bit of a meltdown. I'm like, no, I have to do this. And my husband's like, okay, well, you know, this is becoming a little bit of a, an issue, not, oh, this is bad, but you're, you're not just adapting with the changes you're holding on to that control and I'm like dang it <laughs> ah so things come up on different ways and when when I was too strict or too much in control of my habits my creativity was getting smaller like I was limiting myself in that time that's what I was realizing gosh that is so profound I love the way that you brought that in and I just I think that you have to kind of be in flow and give yourself grace and and trust that if you've made this happen all these other days, if something comes in and that prevents you from, from showing up in that space for that day, trusting that you've shown up all these other days that you can do it again tomorrow. And I think that when we started our conversation, you made a comment about choosing. And that is like one of my biggest, biggest values is just the recognition that we get to choose again every day, every moment that we get a chance to choose again. And so tomorrow when you wake up, you get a chance to choose again and say, okay, well, this is the day that I'm going to make this happen. And I think that when I do that, I don't feel like a victim to my circumstances. I'm able to make a decision to essentially take my power back and decide how I want to choose again and how I want to create this life that I want. But we also get to choose to give ourselves grace and flexibility and allow for that amazing creativity to show up. Just like you said, if we are holding on so tightly it doesn't allow us to receive all of the things that we can receive through our creativity. So giving ourselves a little bit of that wiggle room, those of us that are, you know, all or nothing people, it can be a habit to just develop that, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because even de deconnecting from social media, at first you're, you're reaching for it. You're, you're automatically trying to check it. And then you realize, oh my gosh, is this a good habit or a bad habit? Because these things that we're doing uh, without notice, those are habits too. And it's really eye-opening when you start tracking the daily habits you have. That's what really shifted a lot for me. About that. Like, What would be a good tool for people to use to start doing that, to start tracking? Because like you said, even just the way that we think is a habit because we habitually think about certain things in a certain way, maybe negatively or with anxiety or whatever. So what would we be able to do to kind of start having more awareness of our habits, good and bad? I would say bringing awareness. So well, before doing things, okay, so why am I doing this? What's, what's, what is this going to do for me? But the best way I can describe that is on the calendar, start, start really uh, fine tuning what amount of time you're spending towards habits and be realistic and honest. Honest is the biggest thing with yourself. So if you're spending three hours on social media and you allowed yourself one hour, okay, we're, what could you have done in those two hours? But if you're not tracking it, then you're not aware of all where your time's going. And what I've realized is where my time's going is where my value's going. So if I'm valuing 
something that's not growing my business more than what could be growing my business, I have to think, okay, this needs a little bit of tweaking. I'm not hard on myself. I don't talk down or anything like that. I just accept, okay, Alyssa, this week you spent a lot of time on social media. Next week, let's start monitoring it and be real with you. Start timing. Okay, timing's a great measurement. Before starting a task, hit that go button, and then after you're done, hit end. You get really accurate measurements of how long you're spending time with that. Another thing was with the calendar, you're really tracking, okay, this is the amount of time I'm allowing myself, and then this is the actuality of how much time I've spent. And then always adjusting to like reflecting, okay, this worked this week, how can I tweak it next week? And like do those gradual steps and it will start making more sense. Yes, oh my gosh, that is so brilliant. And I, you know, I'm a chronic underestimator of how much time is going to take me to think about it. And so I think that, you know, I've given myself boundaries in the sense of I set my timer and I say, okay, I have until this time to complete this task. And that gives me the awareness that, oh my goodness, like I didn't get it done in time. So I must have squirreled somewhere. But I think that just setting my, my, my timer, my stopwatch and literally watching to see how much time it actually took me, give me a lot of insight. So thank you for that. And one last thing I wanted to kind of circle around is you had mentioned that it's really just having this purpose or this bigger picture that allows us to focus on the habits. How do you essentially decide what it is that you want to, to aim for? What is that picture that you paint yourself that keeps you motivated to do it? And how can somebody else start to do that better themselves? Yeah. So that's something within you. So that goes along with what I was speaking about spirituality. And for me, it's really giving myself the space. So that could be through meditation or through a walk. And really start visualizing, where do I see myself in the next three years? Where do I see myself in the next five years? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Who am I? And from getting to the end and working backwards is what's keeping me to constantly show up for myself, constantly evolving through it all and realizing that it doesn't matter how long it takes but I know now this, this vivid image of myself and I'm going to keep working towards that. And that goes back to writing. I love to just script. Okay. This is where I see myself and just sit with it. And as time goes, yeah, it shifts and it changes a little different, but the, the main objective is still there. And that's just to be of service and to really allow others to enter this realm of the endless possibilities. And I think that sometimes we can create vision. I just literally finished up a week long retreat with women who wanted to discover what that looks like for themselves and then creating the identity around that person and then creating the tiny micro habits that we can use along with some big, bold steps to get us to where we want to go. And I think that it's so interesting how when you, when you take this, you just mentioned this, it's the identity of how I want to feel and, and how I'm showing up in the world might look different in the sense of, I thought I was going to have this occupation or do this job or whatever. But when you think about it, like, oh my goodness, it turned out this or even better because I'm still doing the thing that the service that I wanted to do, but in an even bigger way. And I'm seeing myself in an even bigger way. It's really, really cool how, when we look at that vision, how it's consistent, but sometimes even better. And so we can get pigeonholed into this particular title or this particular, you know, one goal, but it's, recognizing that we're showing up in this even bigger way. It's so much fun, isn't it? Absolutely. And I find too, if you get to a point where you're, you're in a rut or a blockage, take time to reflect, see how far you have came, like everything that you've already gone through, little, small, big, whatever, but you're, you're still going after it. And it's okay to give yourself some time to readjust. That's like the biggest key. Gap in the gain. Like everything that we look at, we oftentimes will compare ourselves to where we think we want to go, but we fail to consider where we come from in that, in that gain. And so, oh my gosh, like I could talk to you all day. We have so <laughs> much, oh, you know, we have so much in common and a similar vision and how we want to show up in the world and help other people. And I just am so grateful 
for, for everything that you've been able to share with us. Is there anything, Alyssa, that we haven't had a chance to talk about that you really want to make sure to mention? Oh, yeah. So going back with the habits, I think it's important when you have a habit and it just becomes automatic. I don't believe we spoke on that. So when I was speaking about, you know, walking in the morning and then working out and journaling, I don't even think about it now. My body's just doing it because that habit is just just is flowing on itself and when you do so that's gonna not use as much energy and it's also not gonna allow you to just say i don't want to do it because your body's already in motion into completing that habit so that's a really big key that i like to share with everyone on the show is look up automatic habits that correlate with your day-to-day -day habits to make it easier for yourself becomes a part of who you are and you don't have to think about it and I and I love that because as you continue to add more of those you are literally creating the life that you want to live it's so amazing oh my gosh we have all the ways that you guys can connect with Alyssa inside the show notes and just a reminder um make sure that you leave a little review and let Alyssa know all of the ways that this episode blessed you because it's so much fun for us to be able to hear all of the things that you're getting from this. And Alyssa has been such a beautiful blessing to all of us. And if you haven't already, take a quick screenshot, share us in your stories, let people know that you're listening and tag us so that we can tag you back. It's so much fun to interact with you guys as guests and as, as the audience. And, you know, for real, like we're so grateful that you guys are, are showing up and tuning in each week to make yourself better, to be better, do better and have better in life and in business. And Alyssa, one of the things that I always do is ask my guests to think of a question that's going to allow the audience to move forward so that they can think about and ponder. So what kind of question would you ask them to think about? What kind of question would I ask them to think about? What would change in your life if you stayed the same? Ooh, that's good. That's so good, you guys. I hope that you all are getting as much out of this as I did. Alyssa, thank you so much. And everyone, you guys continue to be amazing and have a great week. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Untuck Podcast. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And don't forget to check out the show notes if you want to get into my private club, The Better Club, to be able to learn better ways to be better, do better, and have better. So until next time, keep showing up. Let's get unstuck together. Have a great day.